Hi, this is Eric from longboxreview.wordpress.com. And this is Travis from Odd Those Thoughts on YouTube. Travis, welcome back to the show. It's been a while since you've been on, on uh, the Long Box Review podcast. It has. It was uh, the, Mar our, the second part of Marvel Now. That was the last episode you were on. And that was, gosh, seems like, mon seems like months ago. Yeah, it does. <laughs> And and uh, part of, I guess part of the part of the reason why it feels like months to me is that um, basically I've taken the last at the time that we're, that we're recording this I haven't released an episode I released episode fifty at the beginning of July and here it is almost practically the end of July and uh, the reason for that is I had surgery after that that uh, episode fifty went out I had surgery and I've been basically recovering and relaxing as much as I can ever since. Yeah. And it's really hard to, uh, Travis, I found um, to just sit, sit up, in which that's what I have to do to record. Um, right. I can't, I can't just, you know, lay down and record. That doesn't work. So, it, yeah, I can only sit up and, and uh, for a couple hours at most. So it's, uh, I've, I've just, just been kind of chilling, trying to, well, not really because, I get anxious when I don't record a new episode. <laughs> but you got lots of comics read, though, right? Well, you know what? Yeah, I I, I got all the all of my uh, the first half of July comics read. Yeah. Well, tech, I guess technically that's not true, because I yesterday at the so this is this is what what is today, Travis? Today is July twenty eighth, Sunday. July, yeah. So as we record this, it's July twenty eighth. Uh, yesterday, I went up to Spokane to the comic book shop up there and got my comics from them that I that I order. So I have I do have a few more titles to read, including the Hawkeye Annual and and mm -hmm. uh, that new comic I really like, uh, Ten Grand. Yeah. So. So I, I do have a few more titles to read that that are, comprise the first half of July, and next week I'll get my uh, second half of July comics. So. I'm, I have plenty to read coming up. Cool. Uh, what have you been up to? Um, you know, not a whole lot. I've been having computer issues here until you know just recently. Computer net and internet issues that I've been uh, fighting with. So you know, I wouldn't have been able to record with you for the whole month of July, even if um, you were able to record. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. funny how that works out. <laughs> <laughs> between, between getting new internet and having hard drives die, and you know that sort of stuff, it kind of. Uh, uh, made for a long month as far as that stuff goes. Yeah, yeah. But we've both been doing uh, some some YouTube stuff. I mean, that that's primarily yeah. what you do, and yeah. I, I've been dabbling in it. So I, I, during my during the last few weeks, I, I've, I've put out a few videos, um, which I have a link to at, on on the blog at longboxreview.wordpress.com, and uh, and you should go definitely check out Travis's videos as well. He just hosted. Uh, a comic book roundtable with some other folks that was really interesting. It was a lot of fun. So people should really check that out. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Travis and I also have been uh, playing a new online game. I, w I just wanted to mention this, Travis. I didn't, I didn't tell you about this, I don't think. Mm. Um, <laughs> to, to fill the void of City of Heroes, we, we first went to Champions Online and uh, didn't care for that all that much, I think. I, actually, I was starting to get into it when uh, we we decided to try out this this new game. Uh, I, you know, there, there were problems with it. You, you know, it's it's really hard to go from such a great game that City of Heroes was to something that is sort of like it. Right. That was my problem with it. I think more than anything was the fact is it felt like it was a, it, it, well, try to trying to fill in for a void that I don't think we're going to replace. And so having something that was kind of like it was worse than than something that was completely different. I yeah, think. yeah, I agree exactly. So uh, Travis and I were just talking one day. Um, was it was was that when we were uh, recording that episode with Mar for Marvel Now? Afterwards, we were talking about this. I think so. Probably, yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, I mentioned this 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 other game called Secret Secret World. I guess it's the secret world, technically. And so we decided to try it out. We have a couple other friends that live on the East Coast that we play with from from City of Heroes. And we've just continued to play together on these other games. And so we tried out this, this new game, Secret World, and it's a lot of fun. 
Yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying it. For sure. I I at first I was really frustrated because it, it's it, the mechanics are a little different. Um, the gameplay is definitely different in in some senses than than City of Heroes. City of Heroes to me is uh, in comparison to Secret World. City of Heroes is really simplistic, and I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. It's yeah. just it's just it was really easy to pick up, right? And understand the concepts. Um, but Secret World, you really have to. In some cases, you really have to think about what you're doing. You know, I'm thinking yeah. of some of those those missions that we have to do, where you, I mean, you you're given clues and you have to figure it out. It's right. not it's not just a matter of you know go find this this glowy and click on it. Right. Right. So, For sure. But but yeah, it's uh it's a lot of fun. People should check that out. Um, let's see, anything else new that we should mention, Travis? Not that I can think of. Okay. Uh, before we go any further, and, and this episode we're gonna we're gonna talk about some news coming out of San Diego Comic Con, which was uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, but first, I wanted to get to uh, some feedback that I've received recently about the podcast. Uh, this is from an iTunes review. This is from Estrella72, and this is not uh, this is not glowing praise, Travis. So this the title of this review is This is a DC Guy. It's a one-star review. And Estrella72 said, I am not partial to the big two. I'm kind of a indie guy. This podcast is all about DC and the stories of the New 52. Okay. I tried to read some DC titles, and, and I do not enjoy it. I listen to his Marvel Now reviews, and he just laugh at some of its titles and storylines. So I read Marvel Now to get my take on it, and I love it. I think this guy grew up reading DC and does not realize it's not good. So this podcast is not for me. Uh, well, I, in case Estrella72 or, or you know whoever you are um, is still listening, I appreciate the feedback. I don't know that, that this person, Travis, actually listened to all of the episodes because we praised a lot of the Marvel Now stuff right. in, in those two episodes. It's and, not like we're not hard on DC, too. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I was just going to mention that because I did a couple D, uh, DC review, you know, New 52 pickup, I called them. And I was not, it wasn't gl all glowing praise uh, for, for the DC stuff. So I think they just kind of missed out on some things, uh, which is unfortunate. But, you know, that's that's the nature of podcasts. You know, people, I, and this is what I do on podcasts, too. A new podcast I find, I'll listen to them, you know, probably the most recent episode just to kind of get a feel of it. And if it doesn't totally turn me off, I'll go back and maybe listen to the the, the, the previous episode that they released and just kind of see, you know, is this a, is this podcast for me? So I can kind of see, uh, you know, I can kind of see this. They, they, they found something uh, that they just didn't like about the podcast. And that's fine. I don't expect everybody to love this show. But uh, I, I just I, I, I kind of feel bad that they didn't experience more of what we really talk about well, you know what I talk about on the show, which, you know, I'm critical of DC and Marvel and I love DC and Marvel stuff at the same time. You know, it just depends on what it is. And, I'll, you know, not to mention all of the independent stuff, which is, I, I think between the two of us, Travis, we, we've been tending towards more indie stuff, liking more indie stuff, For uh, sure. especially in the last year, maybe two years. Mm -hmm. For sure. And, and yeah, the, I, I just have to take, uh, or I just have to disagree with with this person's assessment of DC and the New 52 because I'm really not liking the New 52 all that much right now. I don't know about you, Travis. Uh, there are some really, really good spots, and there's a lot of spots that uh, fall short of the mark, for sure. Yeah. Uh, the other bit of uh, feedback I got is just a real quick note that I got from Drew, who said, Love your show. Congrats on 50. So thank you, Drew. But anyway, I, I appreciate that feedback. That was really nice to hear. Unsolicited feedback is awesome. <laughs> For sure. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, enough chit chat. Let's let's get into uh, some stuff from San Diego Comic Con. So, uh, Travis, just so you know, it was funny because I was watching tw uh, or you know watching Twitter. I was it was keeping up on the news from Twitter and uh, the various news comic news websites. And it was really funny. I didn't. It didn't seem like there were there were a lot of you know comic news coming out of San Diego Comic Con. It seemed like a lot of it was you know TV and movie stuff. Yep, for sure. But, but then when I went back and you know I was reading reading more articles, getting ready for for this episode, 
turns out that there actually were quite a bit of stuff coming out of the, the various publishers. Really? Actually at the con and not preemptively? So well, that's what I thought was interesting. Was well, there was many, that, yeah. How many of the companies release stuff, you know, a week or two days before the actual con? Mm -hmm. Well, and in the case of Image Comics, you know, they had their expo right before weeks before that. So two weeks before. Yeah, it was it was just them talking about that stuff, but you know, still. Well, didn't Dynamite? Didn't Dynamite do almost all of their announcements like the Tuesday and Wednesday leading up to the? Maybe I'm wrong. It seemed it's it seemed like they were releasing just a ton of stuff, but it was all coming out what it felt like before the actual con was started. You know, maybe maybe that's why it felt like there weren't all that many yeah, uh, I, news items coming directly out of San Diego Comic Con because yeah. you know they were doing that perhaps. But when I went back and was like I said uh, reviewing all the stuff for the for preparation for this episode, mm -hmm. you know everybody couched it under you know San Diego Comic Con so. Yeah. So that's that's kind of that's that's where I'm pulling all this stuff from. So at the very least, if it wasn't announced as a new thing, it was talked about. Right. Sure. So, so that's and so I want to just point out uh, those things that caught my attention, and mm -hmm. you know, and Travis, feel free to to throw anything in here that you that you see fit to to talk about. Let's see. First up, this is in no, in no particular order. Um, IDW. Talked about the art, uh, one of their new artist edition, and I, and I did bring this up. I wanted to bring this up, Travis, because uh, of your interest in in uh, Hellboy. But they're yeah. going to do an artist edition of Hellboy. That's going to be awesome. Which you know, the, I, I'm pretty sure it's the Mike Magnola stuff. It is. It is. I went and looked it up after I got your email talking about because I missed that announcement. So I went to find out exactly what it was, and yeah, yeah, it's the full scan of his original stuff. Coming out for the Hellboy. Yeah. yeah. Do you, do you have any of those artist editions? No, I don't. I I have friends who do, and they look awesome. Yeah. You know the idea of having this you know massive tome basically that has um, you know the full size, color copied, basically pictures of all the original art. So you get you know all the inks, but you get all the pencils, all the blue lines, anything the you know the artist may have scribbled off in the in the side panel about what was going on or whatever, you know, you get all of that on the page so you can really see how the art was constructed and whatnot. That's mm -hmm. just it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want two of those in particular that they've, they've released or uh -huh. I think they've released both of them that the, uh, the David Mazzucchelli daredevil run. Mm, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God. I want that. They, uh, the comic book shop in Spokane has that up on a shelf right uh -huh. above the, the, uh, register. Mm -hmm. And every time I go to buy my comics there, I see that damn thing. <laughs> and I and I so want to buy it. <laughs> yeah. That's an investment, though. Oh, yeah. And then the other one was, uh, I think it was uh, John Romita's Spider-Man. Mm, yeah, Some I know his stuff. have that. Yeah. Oh, I want that so bad. Yeah. I'm not interested in the Hellboy one, but I, but I figured you would be. Sure. Yeah, definitely. And then the other item uh, from IDW that I that I wanted to mention is Walt Simonson doing Thor only, not the Thor that you'd probably associate him with. And this yeah, that's so interesting. yeah, so Simonson's doing uh, something called Ragnarok, which you know they they've done that storyline I think at least twice in over in Marvel Comics with Thor, but sure. but uh, so you know it's it's looking at or uh, it, it has that Norse mythology setting, but Simonson is doing Thor. In, in, in this series. So I thought that was really interesting. The guy that, that is really closely associated with the Marvel Thor doing this version of, uh, doing another version of Thor somewhere else. I think that's smart. I mean, I don't know what his opinion is on it, obviously, and where he's coming to it at. You know, I don't know, is he coming at this thing with the idea of being able to tell something that he couldn't tell with Marvel's version of Thor? Oh, I bet. Or, oh, but you're going to get a a fan base is going to show up because there's oh, so yeah. many people who like who like his Thor. They're going to show up to, you know, see what he, you know, what he's doing. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm I'm probably going to check it out. Uh, yeah, I, just because I, 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 I while I like Thor, you know, Marvel's Thor, you know, and Thor God of Thunder has been a really good title uh, mm -hmm. that I've been reading uh, from from Marvel now. Uh, I, I I would like to see other interpretations of of Thor. Do you, do you yeah. remember Travis in uh, Sandman 
where they they had a bunch of the the mythological yep. pantheon yep. show up and there yep. was there was Odin and Thor and it was a completely different version oh, yeah. of both right. of those that characters. Thor is kind of, that Thor is kind of a pinhead, yeah, and yeah. Sandman. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. So ever since then, I've been I've been wanting to see different versions of Thor. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything from IDW from your perspective, Travis? Um, I don't remember if it was actually announced at, at San Diego or not, but I'm pretty stoked that um, IDW is coming out with um, Samurai Jack. Coming out with two Samurai Jack um, comic books. One is um, kind of the retelling of the origin of Samurai Jack from the original cartoon, and then the other one is going to tell um, new stories. And I'm looking forward to reading the new story one because I'm a big Samurai Jack fan, me and my kids. Huh. So, so what? Why would they want to? I don't know. So is the is this? I I missed this one. So. Is the retelling that you mentioned, is that like a, a limited series or something? Or Yes. Okay. Yeah. The retelling is a limited, it's like four issues or something like that. And then um, will they come out with the other one? They're, which they're touching on the regular show and, and then, yeah. And then there's going to be a, a, you know, a, another book that's that's ongoing. And it's, um, it's the art's going to be done by, you know, one of the guys who was the original concept artist for the thing. So it's going to definitely have, you know, the feel of, of the show, I think, as far as the way the art looks and stuff. So. Hmm. And isn't it IDW where they were going to bring back other cartoon properties in comic book form? Not just Samurai Jack, but I, I, I vaguely remember hearing something about some other stuff coming. Um, uh, the Powerpuff Girls and yeah, they're doing Powerpuff is Girls. That, also. Is that IDW too? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I never really it's, got it's, into either of those uh, those cartoon properties. Yeah, it's um, I think one of the reasons they're doing it is because there are people who are probably you know five ten years younger than us. That's the cartoons they grew up on, mm-hmm. and so there's some so there's a market for that to oh sure you know to sell to them. I think is the big is the big thing. So. Kind of like yeah. how G.I. Joe perhaps was to our generation, although I never really got into that myself. Yeah, yeah. Or, or Star yeah. Wars, definitely Star Wars. Yeah. Okay, uh, anything else? Nope, that's All it right. for... Uh, okay, speaking of, of announcements before San Diego, let's talk about Image. Cool. Um, let's see, I have just a couple things. Uh, one, I think is... I, I love this idea. And I love that Image is pushing this. You know, Image... Image started, you know, uh, years ago with these artists wanting to do their own thing and kind of pushing the envelope and and this is, you know, we can do comics a different way. And here Image, again, is kind of leading the charge, so to speak, uh, in terms of digital comics in that they are selling uh, directly from their website DRM-free digital comics. That's huge. That's awesome. I think that's huge. I think that's I think that's huge. I think that has ramifications well outside of even comic books potentially. And so explain that. Well, okay, one of my issues with digital comics is is and lots of digital content because I'm an old fogey is I don't really feel like I actually own the product. I mean, at the end of the day if a server turns off or something, I don't I don't potentially necessarily possess it. Mhm. Um, you know, my understanding is is the stuff that I've bought from Cosmicology, for instance, if I go there, I'm going to them to read it. If they shut down tomorrow, I can't go somewhere to read it anymore. I don't, I own it, but I don't own it. Right. This I'm going to be able to own. I mean, I can actually physically, well, as much as you physically digitally anything, but (laughs) I can have it in, I can have it on my hard drive. I can have it, whatever I can. I'm then I'm assuming I can give it to you. Yeah, I can sell it to you. I can do whatever I want to do with it because I own that copy of the, of the, um, of the book. And and I think that if that's successful enough, if more, if everybody goes, okay, if I'm going, you know, I'm buying, I'm buying Marvel and DC books from, you know, the main app, but instead of buying my saga or whatever from the main app, I'm going to literally go to image and buy it there if if and and image i think believes that they can 
that there's 15% this coming next year. They figure 15% of their um, sales come from digital, which seems like a lot to me. Um, yeah. That that um, I think I think it'll have an impact. I think people will look at that and go, "That's what we should be doing." And and maybe more people will move away from you know those main Apple apps where they get their books at now. And I and I, and, and I don't know that I'm hoping that 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 will um, you know be a watershed as far as um, uh, maybe some of these other places selling their products, books and, and music and other things in a format that is a little more friendly than um, what we currently have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I, and obviously I, this is, this is great news to me because I, I'm hoping that this, the image is leading the charge, like I said, and others will follow in the comic book realm. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, comiXology will have to, adapt or die right if, if this if this right. catches fire which I'm, I'm i have my uh, doubts about but I, I i certainly hope the image keeps keeps doing what what they're doing here and and maybe getting marvel and dc you know once you get marvel and dc on board you know everybody's going to do it right you know comiXology will ha have no choice but to but like i said adapt to it um mm -hmm. But yeah, it I definitely that's that's the main, that's a, a a huge reason why I don't buy more digital comics. Like you said, I don't own it. It's uh -huh. it's it's a file that I have to access uh, from somebody else's server. And I, I why why would I want to spend my money like that? Right. You know, I I that's so I would buy more probably buy more digital comics uh, if if I could get them DRM free. So I, good luck, Image. I hope it I hope it. Uh, changes some things in the business for on, sure on the business side of things so okay and then there were a couple um uh, announcements well a couple discussions i'll say not announcements but uh coming out of image that that i thought were interesting so amy reader is uh doing a creator own book called rocket girl um let's see here that is it's amy reader and brandon Montclair. So they had a Kickstarter. This is back in May mm -hmm. where they had this Kickstarter uh, to do this comic. And so now Image is going to publish it. But, uh, you know, it just, it's, uh, let's see, what is the premise here? Um, it's a future cop, future young cop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A teenage cop from a high tech future is sent back to 1986. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 1986. That was a good was year. It, it was a good year, yeah. <laughs> uh, and this is the same team uh, that did the Halloween Eve one shot, right? I don't know if did you get that one, Travis? No, I did not. I did. It was it was okay. It was it was it was a lot of fun. But yeah, it's just you know it's it's kind of it, it's a sci-fi. Uh, I I just love that retro title, Rocket Girl. You know, right. it's just right. It's yeah. it's like it's like that uh, Brain Boy series that's coming out from I think it's from Image too. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, it's that's Dark Horse, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it's Dark Horse. But anyway, it's just I don't know. I, I like those kind of retro titles. Anyway, mm -hmm. I just thought that was cool. Uh, the concept seemed interesting, so I'll you know I'll be checking out the uh, the preview for that definitely. And then um, there is Rick Remender is doing um, a book at Image called Black Science. And the art is by Matteo Scalero and Dean White. And let's see here. Um, uh, it's uh, focusing on the character of Grant McKay. And he's done the impossible, it says. He's deciphered black science and punched through the barriers of reality. But what, uh, but what lay beyond the veil was not epiphany, but chaos. So that just seems really interesting. And there's, there's a preview image here that, again, it's, it's very... It's very retro. It's it's yeah. very reminiscent of 1960s science fiction novel covers. Covers. I know the, all the art in it looks that way. Yeah, that's gonna be. I'm I'm excited for that book. Yeah. That just looks like it's gonna be cool all around. Yeah. Although I have to say, uh, uh, Rick, I, I know there's a lot of Rick Remender fans out there, and maybe you count yourself uh, among them, Travis. But I've not been liking a lot of his his mainstream stuff. I guess. Uh -huh. So. I'm really curious what a creator-owned series from him is going to be like. I'm excited for it. Yeah. Anything else from Image from you, Travis? 
actually they announced quite a few books I thought sounded pretty interesting. Um, I, I'm really curious about, um, and it kills me to say it, um, um, J. Michael schlesinski has got a couple things coming out that um, <laughs> that actually sound interesting to me. I I, I haven't had um, um, good feelings towards the guy in a lot of ways for a lot of his stuff. I like, but I'm liking his um, his um, creator own things. I'm really enjoying um, Ten Grand and stuff oh, like yeah. that. So, so I'm curious. He's doing a, um, a book called Alone with um, Bill. Um, Oh, Kelly's Sinke- last name. Sinkevich. Yeah. That, who knows when that's actually going to come out. And that's something I, I want to kind of touch on briefly about a lot of these image books that are announced. You know, last year they had one of these, they had an image expo and they announced a whole bunch of books, right? And three or four of those books have yet to actually see the light of day. I mean, they actually have coming this fall. Some of those are actually going to come out. So, I mean, they're announcing these books and when we're ever going to actually see them are, I think are potentially two different things yeah um you know some of them they gave some of them they gave release dates for but but this one with um bill i I don't they haven't given a release date for it because it sounds like it's going to be pretty um heavy for them to work on i mean they're basically um they're promising that it's going to deconstruct comic book storytelling yeah and and i'm curious anytime anybody makes that kind of a statement as to what we're going to get and um you know, the artist that's on it, that to me, he's, you know, got his own thing anyway. So I'm really, I'm really curious to see what that's going to be like. I'm excited for when that might, you know, might come out Mm -hmm. uh, and what that's going to be like. Uh, Dream Police is another one that I'm kind of interested in. It's a, a, I guess it was a book that was um, released under somebody else at one point. Right. But um, it's now going to be an image book that Mm -hmm. they're going to work on. Yeah. They're, they're, they're calling it a, a revival at image for that book. Yeah. Yeah, so curious to see what that's gonna what that's gonna be like. Another Rick Remender uh, book that I'm curious about because it sounds to some degree like another book that's already out, uh, Deadly Class, which is basically gonna be a school for teenage assassins in training that's set in um, 1987. Another good year. What what is with this mid 80s uh, kick? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, everything old is new again, Travis. Yeah. I think that might be it. But um, to me, that sounds like, um, oh, there's another, I'm pretty sure it's an image book that has to do with a, was it Five Weapons? Is that I, what it's called? I was, I was just going to say, I think it's Five Weapons, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, you know. But, that, but that's, that's more of a, that's that's played as more of a comedy, isn't it? Or, uh, or, or at least more comedic elements to it? Uh, yeah, I, I guess. I don't know. I haven't, I quite honestly haven't read it, so I don't know. But I'm, I'm curious about this one, just because of the era that it's, it's set in and it's mm-hmm. supposed to, this one is supposed to be more of a kind of a a a personal look at stuff so yeah 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 curious I, about that anything else and um two other books odyssey spelled o-d-y dash c from um matt fraction and christian ward i like a lot of matt fractions indie work where he just could kind of you know go nuts the way he does and I enjoyed Christian Ward's artwork so much on Infinite Vacation. I'm willing to try anything that he's going to be jumping on. And it's basically, they're going to be retelling the, you know, Homer's The Odyssey um, again, which, of course, has been done before. One of the things about this one is, is it's set in, uh, like, interstellar space. And all of the genders have been swapped for the title. So I'm... I'm I'm curious to see how that ends up actually playing out. Yeah, that sounds that sounds really good. And and the last one, um, Southern Bastards, which is written by Jason Aaron and Jason Latour on art. Uh, I really enjoyed Scalp from Jason Aaron, so I've been waiting for him to do some other, you know, creator own type thing, where he's not just working on franchise work, just to see what's, you know, what's there, um, and. That's going to be some sort of crazy, you know, from the South kind of a book. I know he's talked about the fact that there's the book kind of stems from a lot of the ideas that he had for scalp that he couldn't really use for scalp. He's going to use some of that stuff here. So um, I'm not 100 percent sure what the book's going to be about, but I um, definitely want to check it out because I'm interested in in whatever that, like I said, that Jason's going to be you know, turning out just because I want to see a new a new thing as far as that goes. 
Okay. I uh, just I want to touch back on um, the book by Straczynski and Sienkiewicz. So uh-huh. uh, Straczyns- Straczyns- there's a quote from Straczynski here. Bill, dis- Bill doesn't just look outside the box. He lives outside the box, and then he burns the box. So, yeah, in, in relation to Sienkiewicz's um, doing a basically a redesign of how comics are or, or, or looking at how comics are designed, you know, breaking those barriers and stuff, I think Sienkiewicz is one of those guys that can do that and yeah. do it well. So, yeah, that will be an interesting thing to look at at the very least. Mm-hmm. So I'll be looking for that one. All right. Well, that's it from Image, unless you have something else, Travis. Nope. Well, there's a lot there's of books, but those are the ones that really caught my, caught my eye. All right. Uh, let's go to Dynamite, which, oh, my God. I, when I was going through making a list of all the things that I wanted to talk about, it's like Dynamite does this, Dynamite does this, Dynamite's doing this, Dynamite, Dynamite, Dynamite. It's like, what the heck? It's, yeah. They're almost like Image to some degree in terms of the properties they're turning out, or at least announcing. Let's see there there's and I don't know too much about these I just wanted to to just just to mention them because there's just the sheer number of them uh JMS uh uh Straczynski is is doing a Twilight Zone book for, through Dynamite our our uh six gun favorite Colin Bunn is doing a Heroes tie-in to that to the TV show to me. doesn't it yeah and and they're going to do it like 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 uh, Dark Horse has done with Buffy and Angel and um uh, who is I think IDW is doing X Files. They're going to do it like like the next season starts in the comic. So it's going to be right. I don't I, you, I stopped watching Heroes after season two. I don't I don't even know how it ended. Same here. So same here. I don't even know how many yeah. seasons I mean, it went. I mean I understand them doing a Twilight Zone comic because Twilight Zone is a classic. I mean it's, it's become kind of timeless. Yeah. Right. It's timeless. I've have yet to consider Heroes that. <laughs> so, so so yeah. It was to see that was kind of like well, okay. Who's gonna buy that? But, but you know, Colin Bunn, he's he's a he's, sure. he's well, a pretty good writer. So I'm, he's, I'm I, he's I, I, right now I will not read that comic, but I'm really curious how yeah. how it will go. Yeah. Uh, let's see some other things. Uh, Peter Milligan, who was doing uh, Red Lanterns for DC, mm-hmm. uh, he's gonna do a, a project called Terminal Hero. What's that about? Because that's one that I saw that when you sent me the email about, I'm like, I hadn't heard that. And I haven't had time to look it up to see what the heck. I'm a, I'm a Peter Milligan fan. so Yeah, I, me too. I give whatever I give what, just about whatever he does at least a shot to see what it's going to be like. So so the description of Terminal Hero, it uh, focuses on one man's struggle against death, reality, and the big questions in life when the action reverberates with twisted versions of reality and the music of Bob Marley. The, really? The, yeah, the series tells the story of, of Rory, a kind of man, and, I, and I'm reading this from the uh, Comic Book Resources uh, article. Uh, okay. Rory, a kind of man who learns that he'll that he'll soon die, but an experimental drug treatment that may keep him alive affects his brain in unexpected science fictional ways. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe Mr. Milligan is reaching a little too far there. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> when you start throwing out, you know, like the uh, the the big ones like struggle against death, reality, and the big right. questions in life. I start to wonder. It's like, well, that's that might be a little too much to 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 okay. bite off. So, but then again, you know, if you don't stretch those boundaries, what you know, you right. just get bland stories all the time. So, right. what what do you think? Is that something you're interested in now? Yeah, morbid curiosity is going to get me to pick it up <laughs> now. So. <laughs> And, oh, and the artist is Jay Lee, so I think that's a great combination. Yeah, yes, yeah. I'll be I'll be getting it. I'll, I'll be getting it to start out with. There's no doubt. I'll be picking up the first couple of issues. Yeah. Huh. So yeah, I hadn't I hadn't really uh, looked into it with in this much detail until just now, Travis. So yeah, this is yeah, this sounds pretty good. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, James Robinson is doing. What his his new creator owned stuff after he's left DC, that that much talked about um, exit from Earth Two. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, so uh, you know after he announced he was leaving Earth Two, he talked about that you know that he has some things in the works. Well, this is one of them. Uh, this is Grand Passion. Uh, he says it's a de- it's a departure from what he's been doing. 
The series is about two wayward characters, Doc and Mabel. One's a cop and the other is a crook. So you get that interesting dynamic. Who are fated to fall in love at first sight, even as Mabel swears that she'll kill Doc, if it's the last thing that she does. Mm. Uh, It marries elements of a Harlequin romance with hard-boiled crime, and it takes it off in a direction that's surprising, funny, violent, and sexy. And he says he's very excited to roll up his sleeves and immerse himself in this tale. And there's no announced artist for it yet, right? Uh, I do not believe so. I don't see anything in here about that. Yeah, last thing I saw was is they didn't have an, an artist yet for it. Yeah. But, but you know, I, 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 I tip, typically like James Robinson's work. Um, he, you know, he is, he's, a lot of, he's got a lot of good stuff under his belt. I'll give it a shot just because I'm curious. I, I, be, I will be curious to see him write something that he isn't um, constrained by, you know, uh, you know, a franchise character or that sort of thing. I mean, conversations that I personally had with him at Emerald City Comic Con, you can always tell. It always sounds like you know he was excited to write about certain stuff, but he was also always frustrated. It seemed like to not 100% be able to tell a story he wanted to tell without having to include other stuff that he didn't necessarily originally want to include in it. So him telling stories where there shouldn't be any of those parameters. Um, I'll be, like I said, I'll be curious to see what he, what he has to say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then finally from me anyway, uh, from dynamite, the, um, the talk about the legends of red Sonia miniseries. Which has so uh, Gail Simone, uh, it, I think this month in July, uh, the Red Sonia number one came out, uh-huh. and and the big talk was you know Gail Simone doing Red Sonia, and she also uh, was instrumental in getting a bunch of female artists to do the covers for the series, right? So this is this is similar to that in in that um, this series is going to be written by female writers. Uh, including Devin Grayson, uh, Rihanna Pratchett, Leah Moore, Tamora Pierce, Nancy Collins, Mel Jean Brooks, Kelly Sue DeConnick, Mercedes Lackey, and Marjorie Liu or La- Lau. Yeah, Liu. I can't. Some, I don't some, know. Some big, big name female authors there. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to be doing uh, various stories about Red Sonia in in this miniseries. So it's right. I think right now it's planned to be four issues. Um, though it may be extended to five, uh, according to the publisher of dynamite Mm -hmm. and they're looking at an early november release i don't know that there's any talk of artists no not not at this point yeah so just just all the the writers uh did you travis did you pick up uh red sonia i have not i did but i haven't read it yet i haven't got it in the yeah in the mail I just, yet. I guess I could, I guess I couldn't bring myself to get it. <laughs> what? Well, why not? I, I, I don't know. I just nothing about Red Sonya really appeals to me. <laughs> not even the fact that Gail Simone's writing it. No, well, that would be the only thing that yeah. made it appeal to me. And, and of course, I, I, I gave Gail a hard time at the last con I was at about about it. But I don't know. She, <laughs> she, she has assured us that you know this is going to be a kick-ass comic. Right. Right. I, I did I did order it just to see, you know, to see what Gail Simone would do with it. otherwise, yeah, Red Sonia has never been a character that I've I've cared about at all. So Yeah. Yeah. I mean I'm assuming it's gonna be a little less cheesecake because you know, Gail's writing it, but I, I'm assuming it's still gonna be this um a uh, standard, you know, barbarian type story, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. And so I don't know. I mean, I, I I picked up some Conans in the past, but that's was solely based on the creators that were on it because um, uh, Becky Coolin was doing artwork on it, and, and Brian Wood was writing it, and I was more interested in the art than than the writing per se. Because I mean, it's a story that's already been told. If I want to read the story, I can go get the book, but I wanted to see the cool art. If 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 the Red Sonia book had an artist that was doing it that I was interested in. I would have been probably more inclined to pick it up than, than just with Gail just writing it. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't think she's going to, I mean, I, you know, I'm, 
nothing against Gail. I don't think she's going to do something that's so revolutionary with the character that it's still not going to be a barbarian story where they, you know, ride in and, you know, beat up the whatever tribe and, you know, she's going to kick ass and whatnot. And, and I'm, as a whole, I'm just not that interested in that kind of a story. So yeah, that's why, I didn't, that's why, that's why I didn't get it. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I, I had the same feelings, but I, you know, it's Gail Simone. So I decided to give her a chance on this. Although I have to say, I gave her a chance on uh, the movement, and oh. Oh, I dropped that real quick. Yeah. Uh, but to be fair, part of it was I just I don't care for the artist either. Yep. I don't like his style, but the story itself was just uh, this is this is not going anywhere that I am interested in. So. Yeah. Agreed. I, I don't think I'll be collecting Red Sonia, but uh, you know I'll I'll have I'll have a few issues in my <laughs> tucked away in my comic boxes. Uh huh. Uh, but at the end of this, but I, I may pick up that the the legends of just to see the various um, stories that that uh, are, are yeah. part of this. And, well, that's that has more of an anthology feel, and I, yeah. I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. So. Yeah, yeah, and and you know support support more female writers, and hopefully they'll get more jobs elsewhere too, right? Right. Yeah, but some of those people that are listed off there and named, they have jobs. It's not like. Oh sure, it's not like Mercedes Lackey is yeah, that, for, that's true. for comic jobs. I don't think. I mean, I, I could be wrong. I mean, well, but know. maybe this is a this is a way for her to 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 do more comic work. You know, sure, perhaps. All right. Uh, do you have any other news from Dynamite? No. Okay. Let's move on to DC. This will be real quick because hardly anything coming out of San Diego that I saw from DC. Um. I, I guess the only the only bit of news that I thought was remotely interesting that was new to me was this announcement of a new Harley Quinn series uh, by Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti. Uh-huh. And, uh, and I saw today, Travis, you were talking on Twitter with somebody about this, about how... Well, you, you describe it. What, what What's Harley Quinn going to be doing in that first issue? Um, well, the first issue, every... My understanding is, is every page is... Um, is going to be drawn by a different artist and um, Harley will be talking and or critiquing that page as the book goes along. So, so she, com- absolutely and completely breaking the fourth wall. Yeah, I mean, not even yeah. kind of breaking the fourth wall. It's just going to be absolutely breaking the fourth wall. Yeah. For which, the first issue, which for the first issue, don't you I find don't, that a bit odd though? I mean, Harley Quinn has never really been that kind of a character. So why are they doing that? now what, what do you mean she's never really been that kind of character you mean kind of a uh well, kind bre- of a... a breaking the fourth wall character like like burn she hulk or, or or ambush bug but i can see how she easily could be she's she's rife with comedy right i mean i mean at, at least well, my experience my experience with her and you know it's it's limited to the animated stuff and i collected um gotham city sirens she personally is rife with comedy. I mean, I don't know how she is in the new 52. I only picked up a couple issues of Suicide Squad. Oh. Um, well, I, but yeah, go on. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second because it's, okay. it's worth noting. But the, so the character for a lot of people, she's rife with you know comedy. She, she you know, in the in the animated things, she hops around on a pogo stick and has a giant mallet. Um, so I can easily see them using the character in this way having her ha- making a comic where she is um, light, you know, potentially joyful and fun if that's what they choose to do. And I, I'm not hundred percent sure that that's how this book is always going to, is always going to be. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent clear on that. I've been, the reason I came across that is because I was digging around trying to figure out what the book was going to be really about, really about because on a, on a YouTube hangout I had last night, there were people who were commenting that they thought maybe it was going to be like a, a, a hot guy ish kind of a book where it's you know told in a different in a different style about her personally and so I'm not 100 percent sure what the book is really going to be mm. about but I can see them doing that I can see them doing that but I don't know that that matches up with the suicide squad version I, of it. It, I don't think so at all because uh, I did I got you know the first gosh several issues I don't remember how many <laughs> 
<laughs> it was it was over a year, I think, of, of Suicide Squad that I got. Um, mm-hmm. And Harley Quinn was portrayed very differently from like like you mentioned before about you know the, like the TV series and and even her appearances in comic the the pre new fifty two comics. You know, it was she was a bit more comedic than uh, she was portrayed in Suicide Squad. I think. Right. So it right. just it's, it's just to see, and you know this 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 Harley Quinn series could could be not that Harley Quinn in the New Fifty Two. It could be you know an out outside of continuity version of her, and that's right. fine. But yeah. if it is the new the 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 in, in continuity version, that just that's that's a total disconnect to me um, in terms what of I what read, this character is about. What I read about. from what Jimmy said was is that they wanted it to be a fun comic that you could pick it up and have a fun time with. So it doesn't strike me as being about the personal inner demons of, of, you know, Harley Quinn. Yeah. I, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they can make that fun too. I don't. You know, I'm not sure. Maybe. Yeah. I'll be I'll be checking it out just out of curiosity. Um, I don't know how excited I am by that first issue though. Nothing frustrates me more than having inconsistent art, and <laughs> that feels like it's a setup <laughs> for inconsistent art. Yeah. What, and, what, a, and a gimmick. I mean, that's the other thing yeah, too. It's a yeah. Yeah. So what beyond first issue? What, what what does that get us with having all those artists? You know, right. Well, not, they're not all involved. I don't know, that we know who the artist is. Yeah. That, it's is, it's a weird. Yeah, it's a weird announcement. I think. But I mean, I was giddy when I first heard about it because when it was, for, you know, I was at work when it was announced, and you know, people were sending me messages about it, and I was giddy because when I the, when I first heard about it, it sounded to me like it was, you know that Amanda Connor was going to be drawing the whole book too. And that's what I thought too. And I'm like, Oh, that's going to be awesome. But I mean, I know that, that, that she, you know, as a creator has a hard time with, with a monthly series It you know, that's, that's why she quit doing power girl back in the day. And that was such a great book. She quit doing it because she just physically could not keep up with that schedule for a long period of time and without her health dipping. And I don't want her to have to deal with that. So I was kind of surprised to hear that, you know, and then to hear that really she's she's you know writing and doing the covers, which I'm I'm you know I'm interested in the two of them writing a story together. Um, I think the two of them personally are an interesting couple, and I think that they could probably write really interesting stuff. So, um, you know, and she's given partial credit on on um, on writing of um, the Silk Spectre um, for those people who don't hate the before Watchmen stuff and I've I haven't read that yet but I've heard nothing but good stuff about that so Oh that was one of the better of those of yeah. those before Watchmen series. Yeah. And and so, mostly mostly for her con- her artistic contribution I you know I don't know how much the writing of it writing she right. did but uh yeah I thought that was a better one because she was involved in it. Yeah. So so I'll be checking it out but yes I do have my doubts as to what what is beyond number one? Because we can see number one as being kind of a, a gimmick. What 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 is beyond that? So. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the other thing that uh, you know, well, it's not really an, a new thing or, or even that that big of a deal. But they, mostly they talked about you know more uh, more forever evil stuff. Their big uh, company crossover event that's coming up here this year, later this year. Uh, the forever forever evil. Um, which, you know, I, I will get, uh, I don't know how much I'm going to like it, but the, the only thing I wanted to, there's two things about this I, I just wanted to mention. One is basically the tagline for this forever evil stuff is that evil wins. Where we heard that before from DC just recently. Do you remember? No. It was the final crisis stuff. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You know, evil wins. And, and now they're doing that again. And it's, it's, it's like, what? Within three years, I'll say. Uh, it's just odd that they, they're they're the repe- same tagline? repeating themselves so early, or or, or it's, it's so close together. It, I, it doesn't feel like a repeat to me, though, Eric. Oh, oh I no, mean, no, no, feels, no. I'm not suggesting that. It different, other than the tagline, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and then the, the other thing I want to mention about that is that, um, I, so they, 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 they have the main series, I think it's, I don't know, seven or eight issues they're doing. Yeah, seven, I think, yeah. Um, and then they're going to have a bunch of tie-in miniseries, right? Sure. The only one I'm interested in is this Rogues Rebellion because you have, I, I assume it's the Flash Rogues or, or, or some combination of Rogues, but um, 
they're 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 not interested in what's going on with this with this uh, with with all the villains teaming up to Just take over. Stuff, yeah, 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 exactly. Which they did that too at, during the final crisis. They had they had a rogues mini series where Captain Cold, yeah, wanted right. nothing to do with what was going on at that time. Mm-hmm. Like what what? So besides the repetitive nature, uh, or they seeming, have all these new readers, though. I guess besides the seemingly repetitive nature of this, I do like that idea of you know not all villains are willing to come together and and uh, defeat you know the forces of good. You know some some are just not interested in that kind of stuff. So that from a storytelling standpoint, that in- interests me. Yeah. So I'll the be... difference between the megalomaniacs that want to take over the world and those that really are just career criminals trying to make a buck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm actually looking forward to the whole Forever Evil thing just because it'll be, what, it's the official first actual event since the New 52? Mm-hmm. Right? Um, yeah. Because Trin- I'm not sure what... Trinity War was supposed to be that, but somehow that got changed into... Yeah. So Trinity War will happen, and that's in the Justice League books. But as I understand it, what comes out of Trinity War will lead directly into Forever right. Evil. Right, right. Um, but I don't know ab- about any of the um, spin-off books. I haven't looked too hard at them or know that I'm that interested in getting those. I tend to get really frustrated with those, with the side books lots yeah. of times. So I don't so are, I don't know that I'm going there. Are you going to get Forever Evil? As it's being yes. released? Wow. Yeah. Travis, that's, that's a sea change. Well, I, no, it's not. <laughs> I'll be getting it, but that doesn't mean you won't hear me every week going, oh, this just sucks or whatever, because, of course, you know, I am with a vent book. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, but I, well, I'm curious. I'm, I'm curious from a um, a company standpoint and, and that sort of stuff. You know, I, I, you know, as much as I hate them, I still buy them every once in a while just to see what what they're going to do. And so I was just going to ask you that. What was the last event book that you bought from beginning to end? Flashpoint. Really? Wow. Yeah. So you, yeah. you skipped all of the, I got three, stuff. I got three issues into, um, Avengers versus X-Men and I, I absolutely could not take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it got better maybe, but so, oh, by issue, by issue three, I was like, I cannot believe someone talked me into buying this damn thing. So, <laughs> And I was buying it off the shelf at cover price. Oh, oh, oh. Because, of course, it was an event book, so I didn't pre-order it. And, yeah, oh, no. No, no, no. That wasn't me that talked you into it, right? No, no. It was was the comic community at a large. It wasn't any one particular. Everybody that I knew was getting it and talking about it, so I thought I'd better pick it up and look at it so I could talk about it, too, other than just going event books suck. Yeah. So I got three issues in and justifiably said event books suck and have not touched another one since. Oh my god! All right. And after what? It took ten issues of of um of the Ultron book before Age of Ultron. Yeah, before anyone said it was good. So uh, see, that's the kind of stuff that just makes me um happy. I don't touch most of those things. So. Yeah. Wow. I you know yeah. I want. I I talked about Age of Ultron a little bit on on the YouTube reviews. Yeah. So. I'm not going to yep. go into that here, but but Forever Evil, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it just to see, like you said, uh, same the same reasons, just to see what. Well, and and I think and the reason I'm picking it up is because, of course, I, I get all the Justice League books. I I don't know that 100 percent in the Justice League books things are going to get finalized. I mean, they'll come to some conclusion there, but obviously it sounds like it's spinning out to the Forever Evil thing. So it just feels like I need to get that Forever Evil thing to finish the story, the conversation. Uh, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, probably that's true. All right, uh, anything from DC from you, Travis? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, Marvel. Let's end with, well, well, we'll talk about the Eisners in a minute, but but let's end with the publisher side of stuff from Marvel. Um, actually, quite a bit of stuff that I was interested in, or at least wanted to point out, uh, coming out of Marvel. So they had this thing uh, from, uh, or the, uh, from the Ultimate side, uh, which is Cataclysm. Which, as I, I understand it, is the end of Brian Michael Bendis's and Bagley's Ultimate Universe run, and perhaps maybe even the end of the Ultimate Universe. That, at least that's what the the comic book community seems to be buzzing about. Yeah. Did you? Are, are you getting hunger? No. Okay. 
no, but but I know of it. You know, I you know. Yeah. I, I, I there are people that are thinking that that might be the end. That that potentially could be the end of of um, the universe too, because yeah. mm-hmm. um, because Galactus has gone to has split through the you know has ended up in the Ultimate Universe and bonded with the equivalent of Galactus there, and I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and and I guess Cataclysm is is basically the Ultimate Universe going up against Galactus. So I'm not quite sure what Hunger is going to be about in the end if if they're still battling him yeah. in Cataclysm. So it's it's a weird thing. But anyway, um, I I, I don't have an I don't have a a horse in the game as as they say or how Neither. how that phrase goes. But um. <laughs> Because uh, I don't, I don't read any of the Ultimate comics. I, I, I think I've read a total of. No, no, I... no. I'm thinking of the movies that Marvel did, the Ultimate movies that they, the animated movies they came out with several years ago. Uh-huh. I watched those. I read one issue of Ultimate Spider-Man, and I read the Spider-Men miniseries when it came out in trade just recently, and that's it. Um, yeah, so I, I, I just I, I have a hard enough time keeping track of the regular universe for me to take on a, a whole other <laughs> universe too. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I haven't read any of the stuff in there. Uh, okay, so there's that. Uh, it, as far as the I guess the six one six Marvel universe, the regular universe, um, we have oh oh they teased they teased the return of Marvel Man during one of these panels, of course, uh, saying that they haven't forgotten about him, yeah, although whatever. you know whatever. Uh, I, you know, I, Travis, I will, I will admit it, once they bring Marvel man into the Marvel universe, I will be definitely checking it out, see what, what that's all about. Uh, just based on, and you know, this may come back to bite me, but based on the miracle man series that Alan Moore did, you know, all those years ago. Right. And if it's the same kind of character, it won't be. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure it won't. They'll have to tweak it to fit. But you know, but if but if it, basically if the basic character premise is the same, but the way that more uh, uh, you know amped it up in that mm-hmm. Miracle Man series, I'd, I'd like to see what how that would work in the Marvel universe. Uh, and then uh, oh, there's going to be some new now number ones coming in January. So I guess that's Phase Two of of Marvel now. But I don't know that they've made any specific announcements. Uh, other than what, other than in a couple things that 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 I'm going to talk about here, um, did you hear anything else about this, these new number ones? No. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the, well, yeah, I'll wait for you to talk and see if you announce the ones that I would. Okay. The only ones I heard about. So. Um. Uh. Before I get to those new things, I just wanted to point out because we both, you and I, read Young Avengers. Mm-hmm. So number fourteen. Uh, will conclude the first year-long arc that the the creators on that book have been working on, and so then you know I, I presumably number fifteen will will start this new arc. So I just want to I just want to mention that I I, I I I've been enjoying that book and it's it's really interesting. You know we the, we used to get that that um, um, trade collection storylines. You know five or six issues per storyline. Mm-hmm. That they could easily then trade, but now, you know, Marvel hasn't been going by that necessarily, and obviously, Young Avengers is is one of those books. So, 14 issues for a year's worth of stories as the first arc. I think you know, I think that's pretty cool that they're doing it that way. Huh. I never. I guess I never considered it that way. I always thought that kind of that they had that uh, what uh, one or two issues ago. They kind of, I mean, they didn't, they didn't solve their problem, but it had a, it felt like it had kind of a a resolution, a resolution to, yeah. the, to the immediate problem. They got away from, you know, crazy alternate reality, you know, space parasite mom, and um, you know, to kind of move on to the next step of figuring out how they're going to deal with all that. Yeah, but I guess you're right. It is all one big arc, but I, certainly I would think that that's going to be a break where they're going to make a trade ad, but. Yeah, I, I agree. So yeah, I, I I thought of that too, and so I, I'm wondering because <clears throat> obviously we haven't read those issues, so I, it, it'd be interesting to get to issue 14, and then look back through the previous 13 issues to see is this really a lo- uh, you know a cohesive arc, or yeah. is it or is it you know a couple 
uh, trade collections that have some ties to each other. Right. I don't know. Because what, cause what they're doing right now in the book doesn't feel like it's anything to do with right with the right. stuff that was going on the first thing. I mean, they got a whole another can of worms that's happened, and they're yeah, they feel like they're being really um, reactive to what's currently going on, not proactive to what their long term goal is. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So this that what's going on, like like as you alluded to, what's going on right now is you know is that an interlude or is that a break mm. for the story? I don't know, but I'm but I'm, I'm, I'm loving curious. it. Curious. I'm I'm loving that book. I love that book. Well, especially that, that, that book is becoming one of my favorite books to read. Yeah. It's just a lot of fun. I, I'm I'm probably I'm not totally on board with with how you're seeing it, but I see the potential for it, which is why I picked it up in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, but that latest, the, the, well, the, the last issue that I read, which was uh-huh. the, the first in the first half of July comics that I read, I don't remember what number that is right off the top of my head, but, uh, where you have the two characters that are working for that one company. Right. I don't know if that's the latest issue, but, but that yeah, was, another, there's, there's an issue, another issue just came out. Okay. So I'll get that uh, next week. This last week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but that, that was just a hoot. It was. It was hilarious. I, I, I really enjoyed that story. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, so here's a couple new series that are coming out, and uh, first up is they're doing they're going back to the well on Wolverine's origin. Oh jeez. <laughs> I kind of figured you'd have that reaction. Uh, so I guess the, uh, Wolverine Origin Two or Part Two. I don't know what they're calling it, but anyway. What would comics be like if they if they suddenly took out Batman and Wolverine? <laughs> Uh, dogs and cats living together. Yeah. Total chaos. Um, yeah, yeah, I, that's a great question. I, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that, Travis. Sorry, I just, <laughs> another Wolverine book, holy cow. I know, how many, yeah, Wolverine he's definitely got a is lot the Batman of, He's got of a Wolverine lot of numbers. solo titles, doesn't God, he? yes, yes. The, and, Not and to most mention, of them, go ahead. Go ahead. They, um, most of them seem to be kind of, about his origin or about him by him. I mean, I don't know. It just cool, I guess. <laughs> well, You're a Wolverine I... fan. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, not to mention all the, all the Avengers and X-Men books that he's in. Right. It's like... and, and don't get me wrong. I don't dislike Wolverine. I, I, I actually like the character, but I don't like him enough that I want to be reading that many books about him though. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then here's, here's the one I think that you're, you're hoping that I'm going to mention amazing X-Men. Yeah. Featuring the return of Firestar, but really, more importantly, Nightcrawler. Yeah. Nightcrawler's coming back. Yeah. How long has he been dead? I have no idea. I was going to look that up. I don't know. And you know what? I did not know that he was even dead for a while after he died. Because <laughs> I, I didn't read a lot of Marvel comics for for several years. And uh-huh. then suddenly, you know, I, I, I don't know, I was reading something or somebody mentioned it to me that, that Nightcrawler was dead. I'm like, what? Nightcrawler? Right, well... Yeah, that happened when I wasn't reading comics. I came back into comics, and I'm, you know, reading comics. And I can't remember. I was having a conversation with somebody, and they they said that he was dead, and I was like, "What?" You know, it was kind of like it was a surprise. Yeah. But so, what do you think about that, Travis? Well, about Nightcrawler coming back? Yeah. I'm fine with that. I mean, it's about time. He, he's, a lot of people love that character. I can't believe they killed him in the first place. Quite honestly. Well, I can't believe. Uh, well, I'm I'm assuming that Nightcrawler has been out of out of the Marvel universe for a while. I don't know how long that right. is, but it seems like it's been a while, right? Yeah. It's, it's uh, I'm I'm surprised that it's taken him this long to to bring him back. But I'm kind of happy that he has been dead for a for a much more significant amount of time than like let's say Johnny Storm, where oh no he's dead and then you know two issues later he's back or something. <laughs> well, it's you a little bit mean? longer than that, but yeah. well, okay, but but some deaths feel much cheaper than other deaths. Even if you're gonna fake the death, I really feel like it needs to be long enough for it to feel like it was actually happened or do it right away. And it was always smoke and mirrors from the beginning, kind of a thing, I guess. But that's a whole other conversation about death in comic books. So, <laughs> um, but um. No, I'm I'm cool with that. I've always liked I've always liked the Nightcrawler character. So, I I question the name. I, I'm I, but I question a lot of the Marvel uh, books names now. Amazing X Men. So they just use the same adjectives to throw in front of, and they just right now the new thing for Marvel now is just to change those around. You know, so it's Uncanny Avengers, and it's not Amazing Spider Man. It's Amazing X Men, and I don't know, just. So, so not not a fan of the title. Well, it just I just, to me it seems like they could come up with something more interesting, uh, other than to make it confusing. And to me that 
if you're a long term fan, to me, that just it seems to muddy the waters. And that is how I feel about it as far as the title goes. It just I don't know. But I've been frustrated with a lot of the titles for the Marvel lately, mm-hmm. not the books themselves, but just the names of them. I don't understand why they I mean, I do, but it, I don't like it, I guess. Who else is going to be in this book? Do you have um, any idea? Besides Firestar? Yeah, and Nightcrawler. Oh, gosh. Hold on one second. And I'm curious as to what the premise is. What's the point of this group of people versus all the other groups of X-Men or Avengers that are out there? Or are they going to be the counterpart to um, Mighty Avengers? My, what do you mean, Mighty Avengers? Well, isn't that the, isn't that the other book that's coming out here fairly oh, soon? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Avengers, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I just, you know, you got to kind of keep the <laughs> the books equal, so all the Avenger and X Men books. I know Jason Aaron's writing it. Yeah, so Jason, Jason Aaron's writing it. That's a it. perk, as far as I'm concerned. Ed McGinnis is doing the art. Art. Mm. You know, for those that like McGinnis's art, I'm not one of them. Mm-hmm. He's okay. Uh, okay, here's here's the rest of the team. Uh, Iceman, Storm, Beast, North Star, and Firestar, like I said. That, yeah, those, I don't know that. Those are the confirmed members, it says. I don't know that I'm interested in that. Yeah. That that grouping of characters doesn't interest me. I mean, beyond Nightcrawler's back, that you know, I, I don't know. It says Ed here McGinnis. that... I'm trying to think of what Ed McGinnis has done lately. Was he? Is he the one that started out doing Thunderbolts? This latest. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, see, Nightcrawler. It says here he lost his life. It says way back. I'm looking at IGN, uh, an article on IGN.com. Way back during Second Coming. Although I don't know what that means. I don't know. I don't know when when that was. So you, got, you have to be a, a an X Men fan to know what that means. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, that's it for Marvel for me. Anything else, Travis? Nope. All right. Let's talk about the Eisner, some of the Eisner winners. So they 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 uh, they presented the Eisner Awards at San Diego Comic Con, mm-hmm. and the big winner in uh, in my mind here because uh, this title won a couple categories, uh, and the writer won for for his work on this and Saga. Yeah. Was the big winner here? So best. Is that a surprise? Uh, no, not at all. Yeah. Uh, best continuing series uh, for Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. Best new series was Saga. Uh-huh. And I, like I said, um, let's see here. I don't know if it's just best writer or, or what. I'm trying to find it. I'm looking at, yeah, best writer, Brian K. Vaughn, Saga. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to note, because you and I are such big fans of this, but Hawkeye... Um, while it didn't win in those categories that I just mentioned, but David Aja won for Best Penciler. Oh, it's a tie. I didn't notice this. Uh, best Penciler slash Inker, there's a tie for David Aja on Hawkeye. Yeah, and Chris and Samney. Chris Samney on Daredevil and his work on Rocketeer. Or at least, or maybe they're just listing the stuff. That they're listing the stuff he's done. They're listing the work he's done, not uh, not in particular. So, but just... so, yeah, both. I mean, both of them are great. Mm-hmm. At, at what they do so i thought that was oh oh best cover artist david aja also won for that for his work on hawkeye right which well deserved there although so, yeah. although man uh yuko Shim, uh, shimisu uh whose work on unwritten is has been top notch and consistent for the entire 51 issues that have come out so far right well and and, and uh Shimizu does not get enough credit for 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 the art that that is on those covers. So I just want to I just want to point that out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, any anything uh, of the Eisners that you wanted to to mention? You know, I noticed that um, Dave Stewart yet won yet another Eisner for yeah. coloring. Yeah, I just he's saw an awesome too. colorist. Yeah, I mean, he really is. I mean, I just I I mean, the second we start talking colorists, he's the first person I want to mention. Um, because I do just think that he is outstanding, and that's why he's won as many as he's won. I mean, he's mm-hmm. won just a, a ton of them. I think I'm trying to remember. I don't want to open my mouth before I. No, I'm talking about. Didn't Becky Coolin win one for? Hmm, maybe not. 
I thought she did for, God, I can't remember what it was now. I'm looking because, oh, uh, yeah. best single issue. Yes. She won for the Meyer. Yeah. Which, which I've enjoyed all of those. I've, I've bought all of those books from her, um, her little self published things. Um, I thought that was pretty cool that, that she, uh, won for that and is getting more recognition. I really like her as an artist. So I was happy to see that. I'm hoping that that win continues to open more doors for her to do stuff that she wants to do. Um, yeah. So excited by that. But yeah, the obvious, you know, um, you know, Saga winning as much as they did, that doesn't really surprise me. I, I pretty much figured they were going to win every category they got, they got in for just about. So I also wanted to point out, uh, I haven't read this yet, but it's on my to buy list. And that is, um, gosh, where is it? I'm scrolling through the page here and I'm, I'm messing my, there it is. Building stories by Chris Ware. That mm. one, quite a few things Yeah. as well. Um, I first heard about building stories. I was listening to some podcast. I can't remember which one now, but, but they made mention of, of building stories and I, and I looked it up on Amazon and I immediately added it to my want list because it just looks really, really cool. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and, and just, you know, talk about, you know, we talked before about Sienkiewicz, you know, uh, breaking the, the barriers of, you know, what's on a comic book page. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Ware's Building Stories, I think, does the same thing. So I, I really, I really want to read that book. I want to get that and read that because it just looks phenomenal. Mm-hmm. All righty. I th- as, unless, Travis, you have something else comic book related, we'll move on to some other things before we finish out the episode. Nope. Okay. All right. So there's a couple things uh, from the media side of San Diego that I wanted to mention. Uh, let's talk about some TV stuff. Just a few things. Sure. Um, so... Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. will debut September 24th on ABC. Are you going to watch that? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm going to watch it. I'm excited for it. I still wish it was a full-on superhero. See, I don't feel like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I I mean, uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. is a full-on superhero thing. You know what I mean? I mean, because I don't know if they'll be in uniforms or not, but they're... It's it's not the same as somebody you know flying around the cape and being a superhero, right? Which is what I'm still hoping for. I'm still hoping at some point we're going to get an honest to god superhero show. Uh-huh. I don't know if it'll ever actually really happen because I don't know if people will accept it without thinking that it has to be like the old Batman TV show. But yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to this. I mean, well, I, the reason I, I I had doubts was was because of Joss Whedon's involvement in the the pilot that they're going to. We'll they're going to air. We'll see. Depends but, on how much of his quote unquote humor gets put in it. <laughs> but uh, as I understand it, he's, he, he's just helping the show get developed and out there. And then, you know, cause he's busy doing uh, the next Avengers movie. Right. Uh, which we'll talk about in a, in a, in a minute or two. Uh-huh. So I don't, I don't know that he's going to be directly involved in uh, anything going forward in the show. I, I could be wrong about that, but right. well, the trailers I saw for it, look awesome yeah i mean there's yeah. gonna be people running around with superpowers whether they're wearing costumes or not there's still gonna be people running around with superpowers i'm in i'm yeah. in until it tells me i shouldn't be in you know until it does <laughs> something stupid and i can't take it but. yeah what what are, and what what are going to be the the easter eggs that they're going to throw in for us fans you know right even if someone's not in a costume and calling themselves you know whatever marvel character they are you know maybe they show up out of costume and and uh you know we we get to know that but yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm excited for it. It'll be it's probably one of the only new TV shows coming up that I will actually try and watch because I just I I don't watch a whole lot of TV anymore. In fact, I I basically gave up on Arrow after three or four episodes. What? I have <laughs> I have all of them still recorded. I just haven't watched them, and Why I just not? don't. Nothing is telling me, hey Eric, you should you should really watch this show. Are you going to tell me that, Travis? I like the show. Oh, okay. I think it's gotten better. I think every episode is really? better. Than yeah, Damn I think so. Don't tell me that. I mean, now, is it awesome? No. Yeah. Come on, it's a, it's a, it's a CW production. It's not going to be, <laughs> you know, it still falls some of those jokes. But I mean, that was interesting. They ended the season with, well, you don't want to know because yeah, you don't watch it. Yeah, right? don't spoil it just in case. Okay. Okay. If, you tell, if you're telling me that it's, it's pretty good 
and it and it got better from the first few episodes. I will make an effort to. I I enjoyed watch it. it, but you gotta remember it's based on Green Arrow, so my 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 um my views may be tainted somewhat. But no, I I thought it got interesting. Okay. Oh, did okay. Speaking of Green Arrow, I didn't mention this during the DC talk, but there were there was some bits about uh, them talking about uh, who's writing Green Arrow right now. Is it Fialkov? No, Jeff Lemire is. Oh, Lemire. Sorry. Uh, um, uh, so he, I saw some bits where he was talking about Green Arrow, and they're going to be bringing in some characters from the show into the comic. Did you hear about that? Into the mainstream comic? Yeah. yeah. That that was my understanding. Who the hell would they do? But there's nobody in the TV show that makes sense to be in the book. Because they all play different roles than they would in the... Um... Well, what about the character Diggle? Okay, he could show up, but I don't know how he makes sense in the book. Because the character Diggle is a, in the TV show is, is a Queen's bodyguard. Queen right. doesn't have anything right now. He has absolutely nothing. I mean, he doesn't have an industry. He doesn't have... I mean, he's a wanted man. So I don't know how... Where is he going to get a body? I don't know. That, that's that's an interesting statement because I don't see how those characters would work. I mean, I'll trust Jeff to put something in that makes sense because I really, really enjoyed um, the book since he's taken it over. But I don't. Hmm, that's interesting. I'll have to go hunt that down now. That piece of news nugget to see exactly what was said because that I don't I don't see where where any of those characters fit in. And how does speaking of fitting in? So they had they had the the arrow digital first based on the tv show uh-huh. but then but then when lemire came on a green arrow it seemed to be taking on a lot more of the elements from the tv show no no i don't think so well, it's closer to taking on elements from like um green arrow year one oh, okay than, than it does than it does that and the tv show the tv show derives a lot of its the the basics from that green arrow year one also i think oh, okay that island the island and and what it did to Ollie plays a more important role, I think, than they what in the past it used to. Yeah. You know, the, the way in the past that was just part of Green Arrow. He spent some time on an island. He fought some guys with a bow, blah blah blah, and gets off the island. Whereas then when when um um Annie Digley wrote the that Green Arrow Year One, what happened on that island um, plays a more significant role in why he's the way he is in a lot of ways. So that's where the two are somewhat close together. But other than them being young, him not having facial hair and that sort of thing, I really don't think that the main title that's in the book meshes up with the, um, and the stuff that ha- and and the fact the Island's an important factor in some sense or another. And, and, and Ollie's dad in the comic book, wasn't as straightforward and and um, the man he seemed to be, just like in the TV show, um, Ollie's dad is not the man that he seemed to be. But they really aren't that close. Okay. I, I don't think. So make an argument. I've just been I've just been meaning to ask you about that because I, I obviously I don't read those either of those comics and I just thought it was weird that my impression, like I said, my impression was that the main title seemed to be taking on more elements from the TV show, but then why would you have a digital first comic that is about the TV show at the same time? It yeah, just seemed no. a weird, a weird publishing choice to me. But, but if you say it's different, then okay. Yeah, they're different, and of course the the Arrow digital book is titled Arrow, so you're going to get people who don't read comics that might poke their nose into that comic because it's a tie into the, to the um you know, to the TV show, mm-hmm. but, but would have no idea that green arrow is the same thing as arrow and stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So I don't, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is not San Diego comic con related, but since you're here, Travis, I wanted to ask you about some of the new animated TV shows that, you know, superhero related, uh, that are out right now or have debuted recently, like teen Titans go, uh, was it Beware the Batman and the new Avengers Assemble? Are you watching any of those? Yeah. What What do you think of these? Um, Teen Titans Go is fun to watch in very, very, very small doses for me. Oh, um, yes. Every once in a while. Um, does not... 
those were cute. I guess the Teen Titans Go, this version of it, was cute when it was the little goofy thing in between. The shorts. Like, the shorts. Yeah. That was fine because it was just that. But a, a half hour of that, I don't really care. It's not like it was like the old Teen Titans Go, which actually had some content, actually had some story content. You know, it had funny moments because it was a cartoon and they did like that funny moments in it, but it still had, you know, the old one still had some actual level of a plot and whatnot. Yep. Whereas this is just. These are one off jokes for for half an hour, for half an hour. So I'm not really interested in that. Um, No, wait, before you go on, uh, uh, I I will admit. So I've, I've watched a few of them. I watched I watched the first one with with my kids and. Madison in particular loves it. She wants sure. to watch it all the time. Sure. Uh, I was turned off, quite frankly, by it, uh, for the reasons that you you stated. I just, mm-hmm. you know, you know, you know how much I love the Titans to begin with, right? Right. And right. and for them to do that to the Titans just really irks <laughs> me. Um, but I but I understand it. Well, I rather watch the Teen Titans Go than read the Teen Titans comic book. Well, yeah, you have a point there. Um, <laughs> But I will. What I did like about Teen Titans Go is that not what's going on as far as the you know the the, the quote unquote story that you're watching. But mm-hmm. if you look at the background and and you see all these um, great uh, I call them Easter eggs, but I don't know how much they're really Easter eggs. But but you see all these little bits um, that relate to the DC universe. Right. That I find interesting. Well, there obviously is a segment of the population that likes the, the, the cartoon. You know, like, you know, your kids and whatnot, obviously, like the cartoon. Um, my daughter, she'll sit through it. She she loves it. She thinks it's funny. Um, so it's just not made for us. <laughs> yeah, not really. Right. Which I guess is okay. I mean, yeah, that, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fine. Bring, I mean, in, if the, that, bring in the younger. If that, if that moves that next generation to decide to read a comic book, then that's all the better, too. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about the other two? I watched probably 10 minutes of the Avengers thing. I just don't care for it at all. I don't understand that. It seems to me like Marvel gets a pretty decent cartoon, and then they choose after like a season to just to continue to dumb it down. Yeah. Is what it feels like to me. And I don't I don't understand that. So Yeah, the, the last one, was it uh, Earth's Mightiest Avengers? That was actually pretty good. Yeah. And they just basically canceled that, stripped it down even further, and made this. It's yeah. to me is what it feels like. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know. So I don't really have anything to say about it other than yeah, I, I care. I've only watched a couple of the episodes um, because because I have to watch them with the girls, right. and and they're not always uh, available to wa- to to watch this stuff with me. So it's slow going when I watch these cartoons. Yeah. But but yeah, I I I agree with you about about what Marvel's yeah. doing there. What about Beware the Batman? As a whole, I like it. I think the characterization of Alfred is atrocious. What? Atrocious. It is the most horrible. You're crazy. Horrible. No, no, I am not. (laughs) I will line up Batman fans to tell you how horrific this version of Alfred is. First off, I hate the animation of him. He's as big and beefy as Batman is. Bigger. Yeah, I know. That's absurd. And I don't care for him. I don't care for him at all. Um, matter of fact, one of the people I talk, I t- I've talked with about it, he, he thought that he's like, you know, I thought that what's this, uh, Raza Ghoul has a bodyguard. What's the guy's name? Uh, yeah. Um, oh that that's what Alfred reminded him of, mm. that he was more like Raza Ghoul's bodyguard than he was Alfred. Yeah. I don't, I just don't care for him. I is don't it, care. Is for it him Ubu? Well. I think it's Ubu. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I hate the characterization of Alfred. Oh. My entire family hates the character. Wow. See, I, I, I think that I think Alfred is one of the better things about this show. Oh no! <laughs> I like how I, I agree with you about the you know the, the the body type that that seems wrong, but I like I like that he's a former MI6 agent. Oh, that's I, fine. I like that he's constantly challenging Bruce to to be better, and so that he's 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 more protected when he goes out and does this crazy ass stuff as Batman. He doesn't feel steeped in being a butler at all. Yeah. See, I hate I hate that. I hate oh, that. See, I like I, that. See, I like, it's I like a nice Alfred. departure. I, no, no. See, it's not. It's <laughs> not. You, Alfred's one of the constants you don't screw with. You can screw with a lot of things. You don't screw with Alfred. Ah. You don't. You don't. No, it's, that's, that's an awful, awful, awful part of the book. Uh, of, of, of the cartoon. <laughs> okay. What do, you, what do you think about um, uh, Katana coming into it? 
her position right now is weird. I, I'll, I'll be curious to see. I, I'm looking forward to her actually being, you know, becoming or being Katana and, and what kind of role she actually plays mm-hmm. in the thing. I hope she's a decent um, supporting character. I was happy to see um, Barbara. I haven't watched yesterday's yet. I haven't either. It was just, but I've watched them. But I'm happy to see Barbara show up in the thing. That's kind of cool. Uh-huh. I mean, I like it as a whole. That's not my favorite style of animation. I'm just not a, fan, no. a real big fan of computer animation. I much rather have, you know, um, I don't know what you want to call it. Traditional animation, yeah. Traditional so, animation as so opposed animation. to, right, as opposed to, um, you know, the 3D yeah. stuff. Um, I hate to use the description. It looks like a video game at times because that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um but it, it feels lifeless in the same way that some video game action does. Ooh, that's a that's a great way to put it. Yeah, lifeless. It, yeah, it doesn't seem because, to because, have a lot of depth to it. It's just... You know, because there are lots of really gorgeous video games out there, so I hate oh, sure. saying it looks like a video game because that's not an insult to our generation and younger. I mean, that's a lot of stuff's that way. But it just has... There's moments of of lifelessness to it that, that I, I think you, you don't have... That you... That is in that type, that style of animation versus um, hand drawn or whatever the hell you want to call it, the mm-hmm. traditional animation. Mm-hmm. So, okay. But I mean, you know, I've watched three episodes. It seems fine. It's a younger, a younger, a younger Batman, but he's not totally naive. But he gets his ass beat a sure a hell of a lot in this. But <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm enjoying it. I mean, it's not anything that I'm riveted to. It's not. It's not deep. There's not some gripping story that I think was like in some of the other animated stuff that DC has put out recently. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's no young justice. That's for sure. Right. But I, I don't know. I don't, I don't dislike it other than Alfred. I hate Alfred. <laughs> okay. Well, let's have to agree to disagree on that one. <laughs> that's fine. You could be wrong. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, let's move on and, and we'll get out of here. Uh, let's talk about some movies. So again, DC, um, they, there was some talk about Flashpoint Paradox and the next one that's coming, which is Justice League War. And the, the reason I want to point this out, so Flashpoint Paradox will come out the week that this episode is released. And of course I will buy it because I buy all the, the DC <laughs> animated movies. Uh-huh. But it's, okay, one, it's interesting to me that they're they're telling the new, the, the, the pre-New 52, well, the the prelude to the new 52 story, which is, uh-huh. which is flashpoint. And so when they announced that, I'm like, okay, that's interesting. So does that mean that we're going to get from that point on, get movies that are set in the new 52? Because up until now, it's just been certain stories, you know, like, like the dark Knight returns and, right. um, uh, some of the, the storylines from Superman, Batman or justice league or whatever. So basically retelling retelling these some some of them pivotal but 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 definitely some fan favorite stories uh in uh-huh. the animated movie form. Uh-huh. Uh but now we're going to be getting and and I I did read up on this Justice League War is going to be the adaptation of the first 6 issues of Justice League New 52 Justice League. So we're going to get Flashpoint Paradox, which introduces us to the whole idea of the New 52 universe and then move on into telling stories from the New 52 universe, which I I don't know what to think about that just yet. I mean, obviously, it depends on how good the adaptations are, but at the same time, it's like there's so many other really good stories that they haven't told from from DC's past that they could tell. Why are they why are they moving forward with this? Circling the wagons. Yeah. And that and that's exactly what it is. They're just they're circling the wagons. They're they're making sure all of their content is um as much as possible is all telling the same consistent story. I guess. That way I don't that way I don't put in one of those movies and see my Oliver Queen running around as Green Arrow, looking all awesome and acting cool and going, What the hell happened? <laughs> that's why. <laughs> I think it's really unfortunate. I think it's really unfortunate. And the idea of, of making a movie of the first six issues of the current Justice League book. Oh, my God. How boring can you get? Because <laughs> I didn't like the first six issues. I, I, that was, by the time that was done, I was thankful it was over with. I was hoping we could go on with 
something interesting. Oh, so I don't know. I actually did I just, like that, but uh, I mean, was, you want to see a you want to see a movie of it? Well, see, that's just it. It's so new. I mean, it's two years old, right? And they're going to do a movie of it. Uh, I don't know. It just it's just it seems too soon to do that. But yeah, I well, I read a comic book. I like just wait for the movies. But I understand why they're doing that. I I, I guess I understand the you know from a production standpoint why they're doing that. But I just hope that they don't ignore all those previous things that they haven't done that they could do from the from the from from the past and in and instead do just new 52 related stories well I, you know, here's some crazy talk for you why can't they just write all new content? yeah there's that too why why retell things i mean i mean I, it's cool to see it animated and whatnot but after a while i'm like okay you know i I mean, I watch all these movies, but I'm not super excited by them because they they aren't telling me something I don't know, really. I, I Why can't they, you know, the, the whole Flashpoint thing, and then after the Flashpoint thing, why don't they then just tell whatever? You know, get some people to write totally new content as opposed to retelling the first six issues of Justice League or whatever. I don't know. I but yeah, I, I was I was kind of surprised to hear they're doing the Flashpoint thing. I mean, that's the first thing I thought of when they said after I heard they're doing the Flashpoint thing was is that oh, you know they're they're gonna make sure that all of their different areas of entertainment all coincide together. Except that doesn't work on on certain levels because you know because of the the the, the Man of Steel movie, right? So I. Right. It's, well, and the other the other thing I think is interesting that doesn't work also is, of course, um, the latest video game. You know, Injustice. Obviously, that's set in some other timeline where things are completely different. Yeah. Yeah. But. Well, there know. there was there was some talk too. You know, speaking of Young Justice, there was some talk too that perhaps they canceled that because they wanted to focus on the New Fifty Two stuff instead. But yet, then we get. We wear the Batman and Teen Titans go, which has nothing to do with with right with anything Not continuity really. at all. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't I don't get it. All right, I just want to mention that the other, so last two things. Uh, Avengers, the new, so the new movie, the the second Avengers movie, is coming uh-huh. out, and they 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 named it. It's called Age of Ultron, and will be coming out in 2015. Mm-hmm. So Age of Ultron. Um, which has nothing to do with the recent series, at least according to Joss Whedon. Right. It's just they said that a lot of times. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Which okay, then why did they use that title? <laughs> they could have, you know, called it Rise of Ultron or right. or Ultron something. You know, I you know whatever. It just it just seems weird that they they would choose the same exact title. But 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 you know, uh, just that I, that premise seems kind of cool. Ultron coming into the movies. That's that's Ultron's always been one of the big. Avengers villains, so. Well, how did that miniseries work out? Oh, God. Well, there you go. So I don't know that I'm excited <laughs> by it. But, but that movie has nothing to do with that series. Yeah. It's true. It doesn't, other than the name. Yeah. And the same characters. Has nothing to do with it. There, oh, I, speaking of Ultron, though, I did see a, a news bit this morning before we started recording, Travis. Um, mm-hmm. Did you hear about the, the, the Vin Diesel thing that happened during San Diego where he said something about there's a there's going to be some big news related to Marvel involving him and then Marvel came out like the next day and said uh no <laughs> no there's not yeah I, mean, I didn't I didn't really look into it but I heard kind of about it yeah yeah so so someone is speculating I can't remember where I read this now but someone is speculating that perhaps Vin Diesel will be uh the vision in the in the new movie oh Huh. So that might be interesting. I, I don't I don't care one way or the other what Vin Diesel does, but it's just it's just a weird connection there. Huh. Um and then okay, finally, uh unless you have something else, Travis. Nope. I think the big so, you know, Avengers was, you know, Age of Ultron, big big deal. There's a lot of a lot of news coming out. Um, but I think the biggest thing for me at least, and according to um various news outlets that talked about this, the big thing coming out of San Diego that, you know, was comic related, comic book related was the, the very brief 
announcement mm-hmm. of the sequel to Man of Steel, which will be a Superman Batman movie. Yeah. Which is also coming out in 2015. So we're gonna have the battle of you know DC versus Marvel that year, movie wise. Uh huh. But wow, I. You know there 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 have been talk over the years doing a Superman Batman movie. Uh, but I, I honestly didn't think that they would. No, it they would, would never do happen. It. Yeah, it would never happen. Yeah, yeah. and and I, I I fully anticipated that you know because even before Man of Steel was out, the studio greenlit a sequel because of yep. advanced sales and 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 just you know general positive word of mouth, uh-huh. which you know that was pretty cool. So I figured you know they'd have Man of Steel. Here's the origin of of the the new the new Superman. Superman. And then we'd get a really probably a really interesting. I'm hoping interesting Superman movie and then we'll have like a, maybe a Justice League movie Justice that's League that's that's kind of what i figured yeah but but to have superman batman that's mm-hmm. just blowing my mind right did, now did you did you actually read or hear the announcement for that yes that, yes that so the actor who plays superman walks out and what does he do he he reads from um from um dark knight returns right yeah okay so this is the thing that i don't like <laughs> oh, like Holy crap! What the hell is that? So, so apparently, yeah. So, they, so they read that quote about you know uh, uh, Bruce wanting Clark to remember you know his hands on his neck and who beat you in the end and all that stuff, right? Yep. Which is a great yep. moment from The Dark Knight Returns. I, oh yeah, you know, oh, awesome. Yeah. It was awesome, oh, yeah. right? I don't want them to tell that story. I don't want to have the Dark Knight Returns scene be the premise of that next movie. I hope not either. That's gonna be a fight between the two of them, and, yeah. and you know, and that's fine. I, you know, I, I get it from the perspective of you know, because there's been some chatter since since San Diego, you know, and we saw we saw the 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 uh, Wayne Tech satellite in in the movie just yep. very briefly. Yep. So Bruce Wayne does exist in this this cinematic universe, so that that's cool. Mm-hmm. And I can see maybe Batman coming at Superman as perhaps a threat, or at least assessing him as a threat because of what happened. With 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 well, the yeah. Kryptonian invasion, yeah, you know he basically destroyed Metropolis, yep, and and other parts of the world for that matter. Or well, not he, you know the Kryptonians right. did. Them, them, yeah. But Superman had a hand in it, uh-huh. so I can see Batman, you know, trying to figure out what this guy is about. You know, is he a threat? How how can I take him down? That kind of stuff. I just don't want the whole movie to be about that. And in fact, you know, call me you know Pollyannish whatever. Um, you know, rose-colored glasses and all that stuff. I don't want Superman and Batman to be enemies. I, you right. know, I want them to, to be... I, I like the, the dynamic of Superman and Batman. They trust each other. They are somewhat friends. But if it come, comes down to it, you know, they will take care of each other if need be. Right. Uh, and, and by that, I mean, you know, if one goes off the res, right. off the reservation and does something right. bad, you know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, but But in general, I want them to be, you know pals right so to speak. this you want to know what i'm most excited about with this movie most thing i'm most excited about is i think with this movie it forces them to move batman back to being more of the uber detective than just a guy walking around in armor plating you know punching people in the face right yes it, it i hope to. you're right i hope it you're has right. to because because he can't compete with superman I mean, despite that awesome scene and that thing where he figures out a way to get himself juiced up enough to screw Superman, he can't go fist to cuffs with Superman. That shouldn't be what, it, you know, it, he he should fill a different role. And I think this will force, I hope, the character to be more of he's going to be the, the strategy guy, the mind guy, the detective guy versus the brawn. The obviously sheer brawn of you know of um of Superman is what I'm hoping for. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that that is going to move us back into Batman movies that you know after this movie that'll be more of that. I mean, because there's a lot has to happen. You know, they have to find a new Batman if if they haven't already. You know, they have to introduce us to a new character, a new person playing Batman. Not to say they have to reboot Batman again. Please don't. But um, well, as, as far as I understand it, it's. This Batman is not the Batman of the the trilo- the Nolan trilogy. Right. That's that's its own little thing over here. That's fine, but I'm just saying that 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 we as an audience will have to accept whoever it is that becomes the next guy who's going to put on the cowl, right? Yeah. Well, and and I hope there, too, there's going to 
there'll be some conversation and some speculation and all kinds of craziness about what, even once we're told who it is, how is that going to work? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. But like I said, I just hope that that's what's going to do to the character. Cause I, I don't get me wrong. I've enjoyed the hell out of all the other Batman movies, mm -hmm. but I think it'd be interesting to give us some sort of a, a more head game, um, Batman mm -hmm. and Batman movies down the road. Actually, I, I kind of like how, uh, the Batman is being portrayed, and you, you may disagree, but how Batman is kind of portrayed that way to a certain degree in the Justice League book. And I, I like, I kind of like to see that a version of that Batman in this movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, because even and, and I mean, Justice League, you never see him really fighting things per se. He's always the person going, okay, this is what we need to do to get to deal with whatever. He's the, he is the more the investigative ish mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And OK, so so there's that. And then also, you know, the idea. So you have the Man of Steel setting up the new DC cinematic universe. Mm -hmm. We have the Superman Batman movie. And then there's talk of, you know, the next movie being a Justice League movie. Right. Which I think is awesome. I, I think oh, yeah. that, that's a great way to step up into a Justice League movie. And then, you know, DC and Warner can can do, you know, spinoff movies from that point mm -hmm. to, you know, find out which characters resonate with the audience and then make a, mo a flash movie or a wonder woman movie or, you know, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that'd be, I think that'd be great. Well, unless they screw something up really bad or really mess with something, I, I just don't see how this movie is not going to be really big. Cause you know, you've, you've got people who like both characters. I'm going to go to either movie. Um, but you got people who are, you know, diehard, super hard Superman fans. That's what they're interested in. They could care less about Batman. You've got people who are Batman fans who don't care about the big blue boy scout. This, I don't know. I just think it's going to be – you're going to get people to go for just a bajillion reasons. I mean Superman and Batman have to be two of the biggest, most well-known, named comic book characters, aren't they? I, yeah, I would agree with that. You know, sort of Spider-Man because Spider-Man's had a lot of movies and stuff too. But otherwise, they're the two – I mean everybody knows who those people are. I just can't see how it's not going to be huge. Mm-hmm. Unless they, like I said, really screw something up. Well, it's Zack Snyder returning as director, and uh, David Goyer is doing the the writing uh, or helping with the writing. So I I, I don't, I'm not sure now if Nolan is producing too, uh -huh. uh, as he did in the Superman movie. But I, I'm I'm willing to bet that he is. I, I'll have to go check that. But uh, with that team again, I I don't see how they can. I mean, well, obviously they could. They could screw it up. I sure. mean, look sure. look what happened with, with the, the third Spider-Man movie, right? Uh, yeah. The same team, but somehow something didn't work right. Right. But but still, yeah, I, I agree with you. This just, I'm just, you know, as a fan, I'm just hugely excited yeah. uh, for this possibility. Yeah. Uh, I just think like I said, the, the only thing that threw me off was him coming out and quoting from that book. Yes. And quoting that part. I was like, yeah. ooh, Wow. That's I, I, interesting. Yeah, like I said, I just hope that that's a minor part well, of the whole movie. There has movie. to be conflict. There has yeah. to be conflict somewhere between the two of them before sure. they can move past that. But hopefully, you're right. Hopefully, the whole book isn't about them messing with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's to me that was the biggest news coming out of San Diego, and it, and it was such a short little thing. You know, it was it was at the end of of another panel, and right. and they came out and they had. They they read this that piece that quote from the Dark Knight Returns and they have yep. the logo the Superman shield and the Batman right. shield you know and then that was it that was it it's like yeah. holy crap that you know and as as I understand it the the whole the I think it was at, at Hall H I think the whole thing just erupted oh yeah you know it's just I I I really need to go on YouTube and find someone's recording of that announcement yeah just to see well I think it's I think it you know I think it was a great way to do it I think it's just like the um. Was it last year that um, – was the actor's name Garfield who plays the current Spider-Man? Where he uh, shows up in a Spider-Man costume and he's in the audience and he comes up to the mic and starts asking – you know, he, he starts asking questions like it would be a typical panel kind of thing and then <laughs> reveals that he's the Spider-Man. I mean I thought that was pretty cool and pretty exciting too, way yeah. to do it. You know, So I mean this just had a lot of – I, you know, like I said, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I know part of my excitement about it, the fact is, is that I am more of a DC fan than a Marvel fan. But um, yeah, this is a movie I thought would never happen. You know, to be quite honest, I mm -hmm. just 
you know, I could see a Justice League movie before I could see this movie. Yeah, and, and that, yeah, exactly. I said it. I, I thought we'd get another Superman movie, and then and then maybe a Justice League movie, but yeah. but this is this is even better, potentially better, right? Oh yeah, I'll I'll be excited until they until they really start showing me something to make me not excited. Y- yeah, yeah. So okay, uh, anything else, Travis? You want to talk about? Nope. All right. Well, thank you so much again for joining me to discuss these things. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Well, like being here. All right, I, uh, that's it. We'll 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 be back for another episode uh, sometime in the near future, and hopefully, I'll be putting out more of these a little bit uh, more consistently as I heal up. And it's a good it's a good stopping point, Travis, because I'm starting to feel a little uncomfortable here. Yeah. Because we've been talking now for, well, we've been talking for over two and a half hours, um, but we I think I've been recording for almost two hours here yeah. for the for the podcast. So it's time for me to go. <laughs> Awesome. If you'd like to leave feedback on this episode, please do so by emailing longboxreview at gmail.com. You can also leave voicemail at 208-953-1841. Leave comments about individual episodes at the blog at longboxreview.wordpress.com. Please rate and review the podcast on iTunes. You can also find Longbox Review on Stitcher. The Longbox Review podcast is a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network. Thanks for listening.